Okay, now as Monty Python said, for something completely different, I'm going to talk a bit about climate change, but probably stuff you haven't seen or heard about before. So I want to talk about the magnitude of what we have to deal with and the reason that the, the exciting developments that Lachlan talked about need to be accelerated. They're not optional. They must be done. All right, that's a 100,000 year history of Homo sapiens, half the time we've been on the planet. Just look at the last 10,000 years, a very even climate. That's the only time in our history that we've been able to develop agriculture, villages, cities, and civilization. It's a planetary sweet spot, and we're leaving it really fast. That's the last 2,000 years. Rome was at point zero, the city of Rome. Look, you can see natural variability of climate. That's temperature, that wavy black line. Look at the right-hand end. That's what we're doing because we're burning fossil fuels. It's shooting way outside, way outside, the variability, natural variability that we've designed our cities for and our own physiology is built for. We can look toward the future, and these are the projections from climate models. And a lot of people may question them, but climate models are bloody good at getting global average temperature. In fact, they're spot on because we understand the physics of the climate system really, really well. Those are our two futures. The future that Lachlan is talking about is the blue one. And that's very positive because we can get emissions down very fast, as he said. We can stabilize the climate by the period 2050 to 2100. Where are we going now? We're going on the orange one. And that's going toward a four degree temperature rise by the end of this century compared to pre-industrial. Any idea what the temperature difference is between the last ice age and the present? Any guesses? Four degrees. So we're talking about a shift as big as between an ice age when mastodons and woolly mammoths were around and humans barely survived. We're talking about the same difference, but not in 5,000 years, in one century. So let me put that change on the same time frame that I just showed you. There's our 2,000 year history where we developed our, our cities, modern civilization. There's the spike at the end where we are now. And there's the projections on the same time frame at 2100. Okay. The problem there is that, in my view, it is impossible to survive that sort of change. That's beyond human physiology to, to deal with that sort of change. In fact, large mammals as a whole will not be very good in there. Our cities are designed for that wavy black line. There, and remember, a lot of our infrastructure is designed for 100 years. That is 100 years. In fact, that five to six degrees is business as usual 85 years from now, a human lifetime. So what Lachlan's talking about is really important and it is not optional. It must be done and it must be accelerated. So let me just leave you then with uh, a couple of numbers here. That's what we're committed to, by the way. Even with this, the fastest rollout we can of solar, of, of uh, non-carbon transport, of different agriculture, we're committed to pretty much two degrees. We're not going to make the Paris 1.5. That's already out of the question. And that's already a big shock. But that is where we're, the trajectory we're on now. And that's a collapse scenario, no matter what we do with all the whiz bank technology, because physiologically we can't survive that. So the real challenge is we've got to make sure we hit that two degrees. Let me leave you with some thoughts about rates of climate change. CO2, that's the big gas that we're worried about in the atmosphere. The last time that rocketed up was when we came out of the last ice age. It went up by 100 parts per million in 5,000 years. It was 280 just a century or so ago. It's hitting 400 now today at Cape Grim as we speak. All right, that's 100 times faster than the maximum rate the Earth has experienced. Look at temperature. Since 1970, since 1970, the global average temperature has risen at a rate about 170 times the background rate over the past 7,000 years. Why do you think reefs are bleaching all over the world? Why do you think we're having mass massive fires in Canada? That's why. It's not something for the future. That's why it's happening. And ocean acidification, it's going faster than it has for 300 million years. And that's why ocean ecosystems as a whole are in trouble. So I'll just leave you with this point, is that we have two possible futures. We don't want that one, for sure. So everything that Lachlan's been talking about, and lots of other people, about getting carbon out of our economy, it's not optional. If we don't get carbon out of our economy over the next two or three decades, that's where we're heading. 